In this video, we're going to talk about creating hierarchies. Now, hierarchies can either be level-based, where you can have a parent-child. Um, they could be flat hierarchies, which will essentially have all of your members rolling up to the top node within the hierarchy. And some organizations also use hierarchies to uh, generate their mappings as well. So we're going to take a simple example in this video. So after logging into DRM and selecting my demo version, you see that we don't have any existing hierarchies uh, currently. So we're going to create one. So let's, you can either create one by hitting this new hierarchy button. You can select the hierarchy dropdown and say new hierarchy. You can have multiple hierarchies that are grouped together. That's what a hierarchy group is. We won't create uh, one in this video, but perhaps a future video will have one. So I'm just gonna create uh, an account hierarchy. So I'll give it a name of account. I'll give it a description of account. I'm not gonna assign it to any groups. And we're going to assign a top node for our hierarchy. So I'm just gonna call the top node account, and I'm going to hit OK. Right, so now you see that our account hierarchy is created. I can click on it. Just like with versions, there are properties that we can assign at the hierarchy level. And if we look over to the right here, we have system properties, as well as property categories that can be assigned at the hierarchy level as well. So we're not going to go through all these and talk about how to create hierarchy properties until we have the uh, properties video. However, there are a couple of properties that I would like to call out. So the first one is the hierarchy node type. So we'll go into more detail on what node types are in another video, but this is where you call out the property that assigns the node type to that hierarchy. So node types, just to give you a quick intro into it, to summarize it in a, in a sentence or two, uh, node types allow you to control what properties are and, and validations are available for a particular hierarchy, and you can even set it at the node or level within the hierarchy. So that way you can say, you know, for my account hierarchy, I want to show only the account related properties versus for my organization hierarchy, I want to show only my uh, organization related properties. The other property that I want to mention too is the standard hierarchy. So some, sorry, sometimes it, it takes a little while to uh, distinguish because you have standard hierarchy sort uh, as well as you have user hierarchy sort and, and so forth. So standard hierarchy, so anything that you see here with user, that will only uh, take effect for you for whoever logged into uh, DRM. When you see things like standard hierarchy sort, this is going to apply to all users. So now another issue that um, usually happens when it's your first time setting up DRM or if you're new to DRM, and honestly, sometimes I fall into this trap too. If you create a hierarchy and start creating nodes within the hierarchy, DRM is automatically going to sort those nodes in alphabetical order with uh, parent nodes first, then, uh, you know, or limb nodes, uh, and followed by leaf nodes. And sometimes that's not what you want. Sometimes you want a uh, specific way to sort those particular members. So if I were creating a period hierarchy and I started creating the months in the year, we don't want the months to be alphabetically sorted. We want the months uh, to be sorted the way we specify. 
Otherwise, you have April coming, uh, coming towards the top of the list, um, and you have August coming right after April, uh, and, and so forth. So in order to uh, mitigate that, what we can do is we can set a standard hierarchy sort, and essentially this is just uh, a property that controls what the sort order is going to be. So if I click that ellipsis button, uh, we can have our own custom one that we could create, or we can choose the, the default sort order property that is created uh, with, with DRM. That's why it has that core namespace. So I'm just gonna click OK. And now um, nothing's going to happen till we hit the save button. So we're going to save this. And now that we've set that core uh, sort order to be the standard hierarchy sort, we're going to uh, be able to sort the nodes any way that we want, rather than uh, having it forced to be alphabetical with limb nodes uh, followed by loop nodes. So we've done that. The other uh, item that I wanted to call out, you won't see it in this list because we haven't enabled the system preference. But if you wanted to use shared nodes, there would be another item in this list that says enable shared nodes. Now, we don't see it here because it will only be viewable if we adjust the system properties, uh, system preferences rather, sorry. And once we set the system preference to enable shared nodes, we are going to have to enable them on a hierarchy by hierarchy basis. So we don't have a tutorial at the moment on uh, creating shared nodes. We probably will at some point where we'll show you exactly how to enable them. Uh, but if you are looking to create shared nodes within your hierarchy and, and you see that it's not working, just know that you first have to enable them through the system preferences in the administer menu and then there is a property that will appear here that says enable shared nodes it's a you know a true false uh, type flag and uh, it has to be enabled on a hierarchy by hierarchy basis so now that we've created our account hierarchy and set our sort i'm just going to double click on that hierarchy and you see that we have our top node of account that's what we created with the hierarchy uh, in this window we have our properties off to the right hand panel here they're grouped into different categories so we have some that we pulled in with uh, with templates we'll show you how to create properties in another video for anything custom that you'd like to create and adding nodes to this uh, is very easy. You can just right click uh, or select through the nodes menu, new, and then you have two options, a limb or a leaf. So from a hierarchy perspective, a limb node is an upper level node. So what I mean by that is that you can have children uh, underneath a limb node. Leaf nodes are the bottom of the hierarchy and you cannot have children under leaf nodes. So as you're constructing the hierarchy, if you're gonna create a, a node and um, you, you're not sure if it's gonna have children or not underneath it, you can make it a limb node. It doesn't really make a difference. There's nothing that will stop you if you had a limb node at the bottom of your hierarchy. Uh, nothing's going to stop you from doing that. Um, however, sometimes you may have certain like validations or calculations that uh, do something differently if it's uh, a limb node versus a leaf. So you might want to key off of uh, the property that tells it, is this a limb node or, or a leaf node? So um, it's typically a good practice to ha set limb nodes where they will have children and leaf nodes where they won't. Um, However, the system's not going to crash or anything if you uh, make a limb node and then don't put any, any children underneath it. So we're just going to create a simple hierarchy here. So I'm just going to create a limb. I'm going to call this balance sheet. And you can enter a name. Um, typically, 
you'll have uh, numbers here if you had you know an, an account number uh, for these one thing to note is that you cannot uh, duplicate names across hierarchies in, um, in, in, in a given version. So if you had, you know, Office as an account and you had Office as a member underneath your department hierarchy, let's just say, um, you will not be able to, to do that. So you, because you can only have uh, unique names uh, for for your members, it's similar to uh, if you were to 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 do this in in S space. So to get around this, what you can do is uh, you can prefix the the different members. So you know you can call this uh, like ACC or AC underscore balance sheet, and that way if you had a, I mean you wouldn't have a balance sheet department <laughs> necessarily, but if you if you did. Um, then it would have a different prefix and you wouldn't uh, run into this issue. So I'm just going to give this description of balance sheet. And since there are no um, other members here and we've called account as the top, you see when it says add as, it only gives me one option to add it as a child because this is the top node, I can't add a sibling to this. So I'm going to hit okay. And you see we have uh, a new limb node added. So now note the, uh, the icon next to a limb node is going to look like this, like a hierarchy. Underneath balance sheet, I can create a new limb. And you see my options down here, I can add as a child or as a sibling to, uh, to balance sheet. I'm going to add a child. I'm going to call this AC assets, give it a description of assets, hit OK. I'm going to create another limb. I'm going to call this current assets. Sorry, AC underscore. And I am going to create a leaf and I'm just going to call this AC cash. It's my cash account. And I'm going to hit OK. Right, and you see the leaf node has a different icon. It looks just like a sheet of paper here. We can control what these icons look like. They're called glyphs, and we'll have another video to show, you know, creating glyphs and, and setting them up and how they, how they look. So now I've created just one single rollup underneath uh, the balance sheet hierarchy, just my assets. Uh, obviously I'll have, uh, you know, I may have long-term assets, I may have liabilities and equity and, and so forth. Um, but this is um, what we've created so far. Off to the right-hand side are my properties. So for every node within your hierarchy, you can uh, set properties. So we'll have a um, deep dive video on properties, what they are, what they look like. Um, however, th these are the panels um, that we have available at the moment. So what we did was we loaded in all of the uh, DRM templates that, that exist underneath the S-Base one. Here are our S-Base properties. So just to call out, on what, what types of properties that we have available. You see there's an icon over here to the left that looks like a little globe with a sheet of paper and there's a little home with a sheet of paper. So properties can be global or globally defined or local, right? A global property will be the same for every instance of this node, right? So if I have shared nodes enabled, um, and I give this member uh, an alias in this case, this alias will be defined for every instance of the shared member. The home icon are local properties. So this allows you to have a different property for every instance of this given node, right? So 
uh, an example of this, right? I'll talk about data storage, for example, right? So this is a, an example of where you would definitely want differences between shared nodes and the primary nodes. In the primary node in SBASE, you might have a data storage uh, assigned of store, or in this case, never share. In the shared instance, you will not want this to be never share. You're going to want this to be share data. So this is an example of you know, one type of property where you would want to have different, uh, different values for the main instance than for the shared instance. So as you're creating properties, just keep that in mind. Um, some of the other items to call out are you can have calculated or derived properties, and you see this little uh, calculator icon. Uh, so once we created the node, you see how this is pre-populated. Uh, and it looks like what it's doing is taking the node name, followed by a hyphen, followed by the description that we entered. I can go in and I can change this. Once you make a change, you'll see that there's a little uh, blue circle in the status icon. And that means that you made a change, but the change hasn't taken effect because you didn't save it. So I'm just going to click the Save button. And you see that the icon changed with the, uh, it looks like a little person's face, followed by, uh, you know, the sheet of paper there. And that means that the value is overridden. So now, if I go and change the node name or whatever, this will not calculate back again. This will stay as my override unless I right click and do remove value. If I remove the value and hit save, see my icon goes back to the calculator. You can also see a green check mark and that means that there's a default value uh, for this particular field. So consolidation uh, is an example of that where it was set to add. I didn't go in and set any of these properties. It pre-populated it for me. Same thing with the data storage uh, and, and so forth. So as we go through, we will um, talk more about properties. Uh, one more thing to add is that you know your properties can be freeform, where if I click, I can you know type any any text that I want. They can be lists, where if I click, a drop down appears, and you see how this can be powerful. And we'll talk about that more as we talk about properties, where now I can't uh, type in something that. Um, you know, something that I want, I can't uh, put extra spaces in there, etc. It controls what, um, what values are in that list. And there are, you know, some other uh, types as well, where you can define these as integers, where you, you have the up and down arrow, where you can just click the button or, or type. And uh, there are a few others that aren't present in this list, which we will talk about uh, once we talk about properties in more detail. So I hope you found this helpful. You go in, you can uh, fill out the rest of the balance sheet hierarchy. You can put in liabilities, equity, uh, you know, maybe some specific asset accounts and, and so forth. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll continue in the next video.